Welcome back, everybody. In this video, I'm going to review the Samsung Galaxy S24. It just came out back in January, and it comes with a handful of new functionalities and features, both on the exterior and the interior. So, as always, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the phone before you buy it or before you make any decisions. As always, let's begin by talking about the exterior of the phone, about the design. In this case, we have a phone that's very well built with simple but elegant lines. And of course, high-end materials worthy of a flagship phone. It has aluminum on the side frames and glass in the front and back panels. Although, well, as you can see, the design is almost identical to the one on the Galaxy S23 with only one small difference, which is that the S24 now has slightly flatter sides, kind of like the ones we can find on the iPhones, wink wink Samsung, and that, in my opinion, do look better at first glance, but I'm not sure about the ergonomics. Flat sides tend to be a little bit rougher on the hand. Although, well, this is 100% about personal preference. The only thing that I didn't like about it was that the volume buttons, the power button, the USB-C port, and the speakers are not symmetrical to the side frame. Which I I know, is a stupid little detail that for most people is not even going to be noticeable, most people are not gonna care, but for some of us, for the geeks, this actually matters, and it's the difference between a good-looking phone and a luxury-feeling phone, which the S24 is not. Then, when it comes to the internal components, it obviously has the best of the best, the Snapdragon 8 Generation 3, which, by the way, is optimized for Samsung. Pay close attention, my friends. This is not the normal Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, like on the rest of the high-end phones. It has a version of this processor customized to get the most out of the S24. So, of course, it is as fast as it gets in the Android game. As you can see in this Geekbench test, it is very close to the a17 from Apple. They are both neck to neck. When it comes to my personal experience with the phone, I think the performance is impeccable. It loads every app and game that I want in no time, and they all run like butter on a hot pan. I even decided to compare it against the iPhone 15 Pro, which technically is a better and more expensive phone, but that was not reflected in the results. As you can see, the S24 opened up a ton of apps faster than the iPhone. Although, well, not for much. We're talking about milliseconds of difference, my friends, so don't get overly excited about this. The only thing it lacks is a decent game catalog, like the one we can find on the new iPhones, because sure, Genshin Impact and Call of Duty are great games, but Android still needs a lot of improvement to compete against a gaming console. This is something I really hope they work on, because the S24 has more than enough power to play the latest and greatest games. I mean, if you think about it, it's kind of a shame. This is a hundred times more powerful than a Nintendo Switch. But people don't buy it for gaming because it doesn't even have 1% of the game catalog. It could, Samsung could do something about it, or Android could do something about it, but they don't. What I did like about this phone, of course, are all of the new AI features it brings. As many of you know, we are on a AI revolution, and every year there's exponential changes happening in this field. So Samsung decided to, as they should, hop right into the AI bandwagon. With the new S24, we're going to be able to circle anything we want on the screen, and the phone will do an AI search to tell you exactly what it is you're looking at and where to buy it. We're going to be able to eliminate objects from any photo by simply touching those objects. We're going to be able to move those objects around the image as we please, and even better, we're going to be able to live translate a call to any language we want. Meaning, if you're calling a Chinese person, and of course you're not gonna understand anything they say, the phone can translate what the Chinese person is saying to English and what you're saying to Chinese in real time, block the audio from the Chinese person, show you the audio in English and vice versa so you can have an actual conversation with a Chinese person in real time via phone call. It's absolutely insane. And sure, this is something we could already see in the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro last year, but Samsung is taking it to the next level. If you're a geek like me, you will agree this is an exciting time to be alive. But anyways, let's move on. Let's talk about the battery life. Another very strong point on the S24. As you can see, I ran a very intensive drain test on it, and it lasted about eight hours and a half, more or less, which 
without being revolutionary is more than enough for 99% of people. Funny enough, it was actually five minutes better than the iPhone 15, so yeah, technically all of the Android fans watching this video can say that Samsung beats Apple in battery life. And well, as it has been the case for a long time now, we can do wireless charging, we can do reverse wireless charging, which is actually turned off by default, and you have to activate it in the settings every time you want to use it. And obviously we also have fast charging up to 45 watts. Although, well, to do that 45 watt fast charging, you need this. This is a special 45 watt wall brick that doesn't come included with the S24. You have to pay extra money for it because Samsung said that uh, it is bad for the environment to include it in the box. They just wanted to save a little bit of money. But don't worry because I found a way for you to get it for free. I left a link in the description to Amazon that's going to send you to a discounted S24 so you can, with the money that you're saving by buying it on Amazon, get the wall brick because it actually is very handy. It, it charges the phone in about an hour from zero to a hundred. So yeah, remember at the end of the video, if you're interested on the S24, check the link in the description. But hey, let's talk about the display. Another very strong point on this phone because in this case it has everything and everything is everything. 120 hertz LTPO panel that varies the refresh rate for maximum fluidity, a top tier OLED panel with 2600 nits of brightness, and extremely thin frames. I have to say though, one of the quote unquote downsides of this phone is that it has a 1080p display instead of a 1440p display like on the S24 Ultra. But after trying both displays and having them both side by side, I can confidently tell you that the difference is not really noticeable on such small displays. Having extra pixels is kind of pointless because you can't even notice those extra pixels with the naked eye. And on top of this, 1440p displays burn more battery life. So yeah, having a 1080p panel on the S24 is more than enough. And of course, we also have to talk about the cameras on the phone, probably one of the most important components on any phone in 2024. I'm gonna show you plenty photos from all of the cameras, but I wanted to show you the video capabilities first because I believe we've gotten to a point now where you can use your phone to record a vlog or even a video on its own substituting like a professional camera in, in some ways. Of course, it is not as good as a professional camera, but in some ways it kind of is. By the way, sorry for the noise, my neighbor is mowing the lawn right now. Worst timing ever, but I had to make the video right now. But more specifically, we have three cameras on the back of the S24. We get a 50 megapixel main sensor, we get a 10 megapixel 3X telephoto, and we get a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. As always, let's begin by talking about the main sensor, which is pretty similar to the one we had last year. It is the same 50 megapixels, it is the same size, we have the same optics. The only change we can see is in the AI processing tools that Samsung uses to process the images. So we're gonna get a little bit more sharpness, we're gonna get a little bit more contrast, better colors, but the raw photos we're taking are identical to the ones on the S23, which is not a bad thing. The S23 had a very good camera. It is a big sensor with a lot of sharpness, we get a lot of dynamic range, and we have the optimal amount of megapixels. Then we have a 3x telephoto camera, which is the worst camera on the phone. You can really notice the difference between this 3x camera and the S24 Ultra's 5x camera. They are night and day. The S24 Ultra has a way better zoom camera. Even the 3x camera on the iPhone 15 Pro is just, it's way better. The 3x on the on the S24 is just, not to say bad because it's not a bad camera, but it, it just doesn't feel premium. It doesn't feel like a camera on a thousand dollar phone. It's, it's just mediocre. And last but not least, we have an ultra wide camera which is not mediocre, it is a pretty good ultra wide camera. Probably my favorite camera on the S24 because without being as good as the main sensor, it is surprisingly close. We get a lot of detail, we get very, very good dynamic range, a lot of sharpness, and even though we still see a little bit of distortion on the side edges, it is way less than it used to be a couple of years ago. And then of course, we get a bunch of video features on the camera of this phone. We can do 8K video recording, which even though 
though, sure, it is not useful for the most part because the sensor is very small, so we don't really take advantage of that higher resolution. When you're making a video at broad daylight and you do have enough light, you can notice a, a sharper image and a better looking video. So that's that's great. We can also do for the first time now 4K video up to 120 FPS, meaning 4K slow-mo video, which is just incredibly pleasing to look at because not only it's smooth and slow, but it is high resolution. So yeah, it, the combination of those two things makes a, an insanely attractive and appealing video. And of course, we also have to talk about the selfie camera, which without being as good as the other cameras because it's a little bit smaller, it retains most of the quality, especially the detail. This camera records 4K video. When have you seen a, a selfie camera recording 4K video? And it's very sharp. Of course, we're not going to get as much background blur. We're not going to get as much dynamic range because as I said, it's a tiny sensor, but for anybody trying to get a good selfie camera to make TikToks or Instagram stories, this is pretty much as good as it gets right now. So conclusion, is the S24 worth it? in 2024? Well, I believe so, yes. It is a very, very good Android phone. In my opinion, the Android phone that I would buy because without being super crazy revolutionary but also super crazy expensive like the S24 Ultra, it brings most of those features to a considerably cheaper package. It has incredible cameras, an incredible processor, very good battery life, very good display. It is. It is perfect. It is a perfect Android phone, literally. As I said earlier, you have an Amazon link in the description with an amazing price. And now that the video is about to end, I recommend you go take a look.